I believe that test-driven development is a central plank in a more effective approach to software development. I use TDD for the vast majority of the code that I write, even when I'm writing simple throwaway things or simply exploring new ideas in code. But there are certainly times when test-driven development is more difficult than others. One of those times is in dealing with user interface code. So how do we make the most of TDD for user interfaces? Well, we cheat. Let me explain. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. I talk about TDD a lot. And one of the commonest questions that I get is, yes, but how do you test UI code? My real answer is that it depends on what you mean by UI code. Let's think about that for just a moment. There's a general rule in test-driven development that it's not my job to test third-party code. I'm going to start from the assumption that third-party code works. Someone else hopefully did a good job of testing that. If this is not always true, but at least for the popular pieces of infrastructure, it's usually true, or we'd hear about it and they wouldn't be popular anymore. So if I'm building a website, then I can safely assume that HTML works. I have no need for me to prove it. If I'm building a mobile application, I can assume that the libraries and frameworks that I choose work. It's not my job to test Flutter, iOS or Android. If I'm storing things in a database, I assume that the database does its job. My job is to test the code that I write. And if I focus primarily on that, then that's totally in my hands to decide how easy or how hard I want to make that job of testing it. When people question test-driven development and don't see their own design choices as an important part of the answer, that is really them totally missing the point to my mind. TDD is a tool that helps us to improve the quality of our designs. If our code is difficult to test, then we should redesign it to make it easier. TDD helps us to improve our design choices by implying a pressure on us to prefer code that's more testable. Obviously, if we're writing tests before we write the code, we'd be stupid if we didn't make our own lives easier, and that's the pressure that TDD puts on us to do a better job. We see the implications of our design choices as we are writing the test. If the test is difficult to write, then our design is poor. So naturally, we prefer code that's easier to test. Let me pause there and say thank you to our sponsors. We're extremely fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts and Transfic. Both of these companies are good friends of the channel and offer products and services that are very well aligned with the topics that we discuss here every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering in general, click on the links in the description below to check them out. We can certainly argue about whether or not the designs that result from TDD are better or not, but TDD certainly has a significant impact on the shape of our code encouraging a significantly stronger focus on modularity, cohesion, separation of concerns, abstraction, and sensibly managed coupling, all of which help us to better manage the complexity of the systems that we build. Maintaining our ability to change them as they and our understanding of them evolves over time. That ability to change code is my definition of what higher quality in code actually means. So I'm convinced that TDD is a tool that helps us to improve the quality of our designs. I describe this in much more detail in my book, Modern Software Engineering. You may dislike the style of code that TDD tends to encourage, but if you do, I think that you're probably making a mistake. But even then, there are still parts of the code where it's trickier to do this than others. So what are the things that make those parts, in particular the UI parts of our code, more difficult to test? Fundamentally, there are three types of tests in TDD that we're interested in. Following an invocation of some kind, a function call or a message, we'd like to check that a value was returned. We may be interested in a change in state, or we may like to know that our invocation resulted in some other interaction with another part of the system. 
All of these are pretty easy to test at the level of simple synchronous code. We can easily make tests like these deterministic and so reliable. In places in the code that look like this, there's always some piece of code that closes a, feed a feedback loop. So when we write a test, we simply simulate that closed feedback loop. For a UI though, there's something else in the feedback loop, a human being, which makes this a much more complicated kind of test. I call these kinds of tests testing at the edges. By edge, I mean a point in our system where the feedback loop goes outside the boundaries of our system and so is beyond our direct control. Anything could be happening at this point, so it's a much more complicated kind of test. This is true of interactions via the UI with some I.O. device or with an external system. In each of these cases, the flow of control has passed outside the scope of the code that we're working on, and so is lost in some other system or in the mind of a human being. In every case, we're relying on that third party thing or person to do something that closes the feedback loop. This may be simple or it might be very complicated indeed. But either way, if we are going to automate tests at this point, we're going to need to complete that feedback loop somehow. Fundamentally, there are two ways that we can do this. We can place the test outside of our code, representing the thing that is outside of our control, the user or external system, which is okay for some kinds of technologies and very difficult, if not impossible, for others. For example, if we're testing a web-based user interface, we could think of using a testing framework, something like Selenium, Jasmine or Jest. These are tools that help us close the loop by simulating user interactions via our user interface. They are, in effect, pretending to be a user of our system. They provide often a sequence of inputs and then look at the outputs represented in our UI and then make assertions against those. This is a more complex form of test than a unit test, really, because it needs a lot of often complex code to be up and running a browser, for example, before we can test everything. But it does close the feedback loop. This can be a very useful form of testing and can tell us things that are difficult to find out in other ways. But tests like these are slow and complicated compared to unit tests. So while we'd probably like some tests like this, to help us to be sure that everything works together, this is a slow and expensive way to test the more detailed behaviours of our system. Like how the system should respond to invalid inputs. Does the system place an order when place order, the place order button is pushed? And does a space invader explode when it's hit by a missile? We'd prefer to be able to test these sorts of things more quickly and more easily as we are evolving our design than waiting for a whole browser to load for every single test. So there's another way that we can do this by taking advantage of the idea that I mentioned earlier. It is now our job to prove that the infrastructure works. Let's just assume that the third party code that renders our UI or stores our data actually works. Then design our code so that the interesting bits aren't deeply entangled with the third party bits. So we architect our system to draw a stronger boundary around parts of our code increasing the level of abstraction at the points which our code touches the infrastructure. This has several benefits. It means that we can simplify our interaction with the third party code, so the more interesting parts of our code are simpler and less entangled. It also means that our interactions with the third party code tend to become more generic and more capable over time, and so more reliable. In effect, what we are doing here is giving ourselves the option of closing the feedback loop inside our area of control, inside our code. Our system is architected like this. We have a layer of general purpose third party code to draw our UI and initiating behavior in our code when somebody presses a button. We have a thin, usually relatively simple translation layer that converts between the third party code and the UI or anything else and our code. And finally, we have our code where the interesting things happen, the things that we're really interested in testing. Now, the feedback loop is simpler, relies on fewer moving parts, and is wholly under our control within the bounds of our code. This is a bit more work, perhaps, but I think it results in better code for a variety of reasons, but importantly, because it's more testable.
We did this in a moderately complex fashion at LMAX. We wanted to be able to test our web-based UI code without starting up a browser. So we abstracted our use of the browser in our UI code everywhere where we touched a browser. So instead of creating a button like this, a UI code would create a button like this. Behind the scenes, there would be some code that interpreted this simple call into something more complex, pretty close to my first example. But now, by this simple step of abstracting the creation of each type of UI component that we used, we could, we could fake those things in the scope of a test. You may be worrying about the translation code, the adapter, in this ports and adapter patterned design. But usually this code is reasonably generic. By its nature, once it's working, it probably is not going to change very much. So we can test it with more complex browser-based tests, but we don't need to run those slower, more complex tests as part of the commit stage of our deployment pipeline. This code is just plumbing, really. Once we know that the plumbing works, any task-specific testing is only showing that browsers work. With this strategy, we can write faster, lighter weight, simpler tests to thoroughly evaluate the logic of our code in the absence of a real UI. We'll trust that the third-party UI code does its job, that browsers work. And we'll trust that our custom plumbing works because it's tested once elsewhere, rather than many, many times for every feature that we write. In our tests, for the really interesting bits of our code, we can provide a fake version of our UI abstraction designed to run the code without any need for a real UI. We can fake interactions more directly with simple function calls and test all of our logic except for the thin layer of stuff that translates our representation of a browser into pixel painting, the plumbing. So now we have real test-driven development for the more complex bits of logic in our event handlers and the code that integrates with the back ends of our system, all fully under our control, but all easily testable because we've eliminated any troublesome dependencies. This is a powerful strategy. I tend to call it testing at the edges. Martin Fowler refers to this as the humble object pattern. But either way, it puts our ability to test firmly into our own hands, increasing the determinism of our test and our code, and so improving the overall quality of the systems that we build as a result. Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoy our stuff here on the Continuous Delivery channel, please do consider joining our Patreon community and supporting our channel and its growth. There's some great value to the Patreon community, and I'd like to thank our existing patrons very much once again for your ongoing support. Thanks again.